Out of every level in Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy, one would have never guessed that the connector levels would hold the most rich and exciting history the game has ever seen. The discoveries within these levels have consistently defied the limits of what was thought possible, and have forever changed the way the game is played. Progressing through each of these levels requires riding a vehicle called the Zoomer. Unlocking the Zoomer to each connector level comes with the cost of collecting a large amount of power cells, the game's main collectible. For many years, skipping these power cell requirements was considered impossible in every way. The idea that you could get through Fire Canyon, Mountain Pass, and Lava Tube through other means besides the Zoomer was a big stretch. But of course, these are speedrunners we're talking about, and they will always find a way. Over time, the Jack speedrunning community have managed to lower the power cell count for beating the game from its intended 77 to now only 8. Let's see how they did it. The sponsor of today's video is a trustworthy and reliable brand that I've used for months, and that is Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is a fast and easy to use VPN service that can be used on unlimited devices in your home. I currently have Surfshark on my computer and my phone, which helps me be secure at all times from shady corporations attempting to steal my data. It feels nice to know that with a simple click of a button in the Surfshark app, I can assure myself that I can be completely safe on public Wi-Fi when I'm outside. Another big perk with Surfshark for me personally is being able to listen to underground songs and albums on YouTube that I can't find elsewhere on streaming services like Spotify. Occasionally these songs will be blocked in my country, but Surfshark allows me to change my location to anywhere in the world. Surfshark also maintain a strict no logs policy, so you truly are safe when using their service. You can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals/ricky and enter promo code ricky for 84% off and 4 extra months for free. That's surfshark.deals/ricky. Progressing through Jack 1 is relatively similar to many other 3D platformers of the era, consisting of multiple hub areas separated by the connector levels. You run around the hub levels collecting precursor orbs, which are the game's currency, scout flies, which are kind of like Mario 64's red coins, and power cells, which you need a certain number of to move from one hub area to the next. These cell requirements are in order, 20 cells to get from hub 1 to hub 2 via Fire Canyon, 45 cells to get from hub 2 to hub 3 via the Claw boss fight and mountain pass, and 72 cells to travel through the notorious lava tube to reach the final level of the game. 77 is the lowest amount of power cells you need to obtain to beat the game. After unlocking lava tube with 72, you obtain another by reaching the end, putting you at 73. In the final level goal in Maya Citadel, your objective is to free the four sages, blue, red, yellow, and finally Samos, the green sage. All of who giving you a power cell, putting you at 77. In the earliest days of Jack speedrunning all the way back in 2009, this is how runner Zenic Reverie completed the game in 140.11. This was effectively the run to beat, both in terms of time and power cell count. As 2009, 10, and 11 pass, we enter the so-called Twitch era where speedrunning would enter a bit of a golden age in terms of activity. The first person to lower the power cell count of the full run would be Zeppelins, who picked up Jack and Daxter speedrunning in 2012. Zeppelins discovered a very bizarre glitch on the final level of the game. Certain versions of the game had a faulty checkpoint flag when entering Gull and Maya Citadel. After watching the cutscene with Samos upon entering, you can save the game, load the save you just made, and you'll appear at the top of the citadel right next to the final boss door. The door won't open unless you free Samos, so he is required to rescue. But the other three sages are now completely skipped, saving around 6 minutes and lowering the power cell count by 3 to 74. The version Zeppelins was on when performing the glitch was an American Black Label version of the game. Some other versions, including the PS2 Greatest Hits version and the digital PS3 and 4 versions, have the skip patched for some odd reason. If you're interested in which versions the skip works on, there's a detailed post on the Jack Speedruns forum. Link to that in the description. With that in mind, a massive chunk of time was cut from the speedrun, and the first big sequence break was found. The community continued to grow slowly but surely throughout 2012 and 2013, and another big sequence break would be found not too long afterwards, this time by Freak for Games. Shown here in a highlight by Roser in October of 2013, a skip for the 45 cell requirement in Rock Village was discovered. 
This was named Boulder Skip, as the big boulder is the main obstacle blocking you from progressing to the claw boss fight. By dipping low with a punch off a ledge then uppercutting and spinning quickly, you can regain the height you lost from the punch in the form of an extended uppercut. You can then stand on a small outcrop that sticks out from the wall and jump around the boulder. Yes, I got it! That is a way of skipping both the Kira cutscene there and the Blue Sage cutscene over in his hut, which I can't see from here. Uh, that will save about two seconds, and I'd like to thank freak for games for telling me about it. And then uh, everything works fine. You can still trigger the Red Sage's cutscene, and this works fine. Yeah, that's a new, new little skip, which saves a little bit of time. Even though the discovery was significant, allowing a large cutscene to be skipped, the time save wouldn't quite be as huge as everyone had hoped for. Yeah, sure, you can skip the 45 cell requirement, but you would still need to acquire 72 for Lava Tube. And at that moment, everyone was thinking the same thing. That's definitely the end of the road. Lava Tube skip is too far fetched. It's almost certainly impossible. 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 The theory behind Lava Tube Skip is, it is impossible. If I can make it on foot, all the way... All this way, if I can make it on foot, all this way, to here, and then get into the next area, when I die, it will spawn me up here, on the zoomer, before I've activated Kira in the other place. That's the theory. The theory is, if you can make it that far without dying, on foot, all this way, then you don't need 72 cells. And it's, it's impossible. Oh god, what? Okay, I, I completely forgot about this. I mean, if you look here, I can stand here, uh, I can stand somewhere here, here, yeah, I can stand here without taking damage, and then if I, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, if I roll jump, I can stand on this thing without taking any damage, and this thing without taking any damage, you can make it stupidly far, um, I can stand on these, I believe, yeah, so now, if I roll jump right to the very edge of that thing, I think it's from here. Ah, oh, fuck. Anyway, if I landed where my feet are, I can stand on those bricks. Come over here. That Take damage here. Take damage here. Make it over here. You're now on two health. You've got to start with four health. Make your way over here. Come over here. From here, you get to here. Then from here, you can get to here. I don't know how it works, I've completely forgotten the And this this is how far I've got. I've got this far. And the thing is, if I can make it over across this one gap, it may be possible. It might be possible. But the thing is, it's not. <laughs> because of that one gap. If you can skip getting 50 cells, then the game's like 20 minutes long. I've done so much to try and get that little bit further, but it just can't be done. How in God's name was this going to work? The PS2 emulation tools we had to work with in 2013 were poor and unoptimized, so they weren't of any use. If Lava Tube Skip was going to be found, it was going to come down to the game and the player. Every attempt I did, I had to go to Spider Cave, pick up a health block, and walk back. You can't save and then load, because that puts you back to three health. If you want to get even slightly that far, you need the four health. And every attempt I did, I had to go back to Spider Cave in order to get more health. It just couldn't be done. 
Despite some decent progress with how far you could get into the level on foot, there was still so much more to go. As mentioned previously, 2013 were more primitive times. Back then, the community was much smaller than what you would see now, and the amount of people putting in work to try and make the skip possible could pretty much be counted on one hand. PS2 emulators were also demanding for PCs back then, with Roser and I being unable to run the game at a stable frame rate. The biggest challenge now would be to find a way to get from this pillar with the Scoutfly box next to it all the way over to the rocks on the other side. This proved a little too daunting at the time, and the possibility of finding new time save elsewhere in the run seemed far more likely. Lava Tube Skip would have to wait. As more speedrunners began streaming on Twitch and posting their runs to YouTube, it would attract more and more new people to the community. At the European Speedrunner Assembly 2013, it was just me and Roser attending. Of course, it wasn't just us two in the community, but we were the only two Europeans able to go. The following year of 2014, we would see one more member join us at the event. But after that, activity skyrocketed in the scene. 2015 and 2016 were big years for the Jack community. At ESA 2015, we had 9 people attending, and 14 at 2016. This boost in activity naturally meant that there were going to be more people interested in finding skips and glitches for the runs. One of the newer runners to join the scene was Headstrong, who became infamous for breaking legendary minute barriers within the Jack games, while simultaneously finding lots of useful glitches. Headstrong and another old school glitch hunter, Bloppy, decided to take a look at Lava Tube Skip at the start of 2016 and found an improvement almost immediately. It was now possible to save one health at the start by ledge grabbing all the way around the outside of Lava Tube, grabbing each ledge pretty much blindly from out of bounds. This find was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the discoveries that would be unearthed at the start of 2016, and they would all come from the same source. Kitar began speedrunning the Jack games in early 2014. Throughout that year, I was one of the only people actively streaming runs of the first three Jack games, so I gained a decent following averaging between 50 to 200 viewers. I would stream almost every day when I came home from school, and Kitar would take notice of my consistent streaming times. He quickly became a regular viewer of mine and ended up running Jack 3 because of me. He got some respectable times in the game for 2014, but quickly got burnt out on grinding for a better time, and started to gravitate more towards glitch hunting. Kitar was never known to stream on Twitch very much, so when it finally said that he was live, it was definitely exciting to see what he was cooking up. He had made some pretty big waves with his findings in Jack 3, so when he heard that Headstrong and Bloppy were working on Lava Tube Skip, he decided to crack his knuckles and see what he could do. Within the span of only two days in January of 2016, Kitar would edge his way closer and closer to making Lava Tube Skip a possibility. Not wanting to reveal his discoveries to anyone besides a handful of people, he decided to keep it under wraps until the final product was ready to be revealed. On January 23rd, he hit us with surprise.mp4. The guy's voice. Check out Kitar's screen. He's got a timer on it. I swear to God, if he's gonna show us lava tubes, if I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I think this is the death of Jack One. Everyone goes to Jack Two now. Okay, so time. Oh uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is lava tube skip, isn't it? What the hell is happening? Why is everyone spamming? Very possibly lava tube skip. Oh no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Five, Five four, seconds. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, <laughs> surprise on MP4. <laughs> oh, no. It's lava tube skip, dude! <laughs> oh my god. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's over, boys. It's, over. it's fucking over. It's dead. Any percent is dead, Kappa. Oh! oh. What is he oh. doing? Oh! Zoom walking. He's just probably I think just he's hanging out grabbing the around the entire level. Oh my god, what a great fucking. <laughs> yeah, he's edge coming from the level. This is perfect.
doesn't have to do it through the entire thing. He just has to get past. Oh my god! Game. Really? He had to get that far with nothing. Okay, that's fine. Stupid. All it does is gets him that far without taking damage. Now what's he gonna do? Yeah, he has an extra health. Oh no. Oh no. Hit. Oh, oh dude. No. Oh. No, no, no. oh. Oh. Oh dude. 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 This is fucking perfect. Oh god. I love it. I love it. Find that. Uh, How did no one find that? Yeah, but we oh, also had to have some bloody temple skip and then that happened. Guitar is such a god. I fucking hate <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, he's in the pillar. <laughs> what? Oh, he has to ledge grab along here because for whatever reason that one gives you damage. Okay, nice. We got it, dude. I'm gonna contact Zeppelins right fucking now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this almost we this... finally did it! Holy hell! It's 2016. Lava tube skip is a thing. Oh, there we go. Boom, there we bam! Go. Lava oh tube my. skip. Oh boy! This. This was like the smallest gap where you still take damage. So um, I remember asking uh, in the Skype group, like if someone like had an idea, like uh, how to like cross this. Um, I think pretty sure it was Luigi that said like, oh, you can get boosted on the on the scout fly. So that's why I tried. I realized that like the scout fly like bounces up and down, and that's why that's why here I wait. Um, I use like that small bounce to get like a little bit more height and have just enough to like make that boost. <laughs> that's so insane. Yeah, like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. oh my God. The the crazy part about this is that every time you do a movement on the on the scout fly, it like resets a timer and so the the box stop bouncing for a bit. Which means that even though I'm on an emulator and then I can like I could like do a save set, wait and then like see it on which frame um, it bounces and then like just remember that like frame count and then like work a bit earlier to like get the boosted. Uh, you couldn't do that because if you start to work early, uh, you like reset the counter on the box. After like 10 minutes of trying like from pre set, I, I just got it. And when I just got that, when I got that boosted, I knew like, I knew at that point like, okay, level tube skip is possible. That's just... At that point, I was at full damage. So I just knew at that point when I got that uh, boosted for the first time, that was like the last the last piece of the puzzle. This uh, this actually like look a bit crazier than it is because you'd think like there's only like this area that you can stand on, but it's actually like more like this. It's like a big area here. Okay. It's like a big area here. Now, visually, like, it still looks area. like crazy though. But yeah, yeah. If, if the hitbox like, is bigger than... Yeah, you can see here. I don't even like land on the, on the rocks. So. Yeah, like here. See, I, I, I land like on the lava, but all of this area is like safe. Here, I just have to like jump around this corner. Like from here to like very far, there's like no, there was like no count spot. Like this pillar here, I, I feel like by walking to it and like doing high jump and stuff, I could like go inside of it. So I just like messing around with that. And at some point, I got stuck inside of it. I was, oh, okay, I can get like a stun point. I can go in goggles. So what can I do from here? Actually, the bottom of this is like solid from the inside. So what I do here, I jump here and I, you can like slide all the way to like the next set Oh spot. my God. After finding the setup and after like making a safe set at the setup. So I do the whole setup and then I make a safe set and it still take me like 20 minutes to like get one of those. <laughs> like this, this whole jump, um, it's like, Probably the single hardest like jump in the whole game. Like, I I can't think of anything that's like harder than this jump. There's not a single spot where you can save more health to do V1. Like, if any of those like 50 things that has to happen to for the skip to work like didn't work, like the skip would be impossible.
During the lava tube skip unveiling, an almost prophetic message was posted in the chat by Mergy. Here is my prediction. Before anyone will ever pull the skip off in an RTA run, we will have a different way to skip it way easier. Mark my words. Not a bad prediction, as Lava Tube Skip version 2 was just around the corner. One month after the discovery of the skip, Headstrong had this happen to her. What? What? What did I do? <laughs> what you just saw is something called an idle deload, and is a very complex trick to wrap your head around. It would become the key in making version 2 of Lava Tubes get possible. To understand how this works, we need to keep track of two values within the game's memory. One for Jack's current checkpoint, and one that stores the ID for a level, but not necessarily the one Jack is currently in. This stored level ID is used to know which level to load and where to put Jack in case something goes wrong. By being in Volcanic Crater and doing the rocket uppercut that you saw in version 1, we can go out of bounds. We're now going to head towards the entrance of Lava Tube and grab its checkpoint from Out of Bounds. Afterwards, we need to wait 30 seconds to trigger Jack's idle animation. The idle animation is one of the flags that updates Lava Tube as the stored level ID. After Jack's idle animation plays, we head backwards out of bounds to switch the checkpoint from Lava Tube to Volcanic Crater. We need to keep this as our checkpoint until the end of the trick, so we're going to jump around the entrance checkpoint of Lava Tube with a precise extended uppercut. Now we can head through Lava Tube on foot, utilizing as many cold spots as possible to reach the Scout Fly Box halfway through. Do the boosted off the Scout Fly Box just like before, and now we wait. Yet another 30 seconds has to go by here for us to be able to perform the previously mentioned idle deload. By cancelling the start of Jack's idle animation with another action, in this case a pause buffer, done by pressing start and R2 or L2 on the same frame, for some reason we trigger a failsafe routine within the game. During the failsafe, the game looks back at the stored level ID, which in this case is Lava Tube. It then attempts to verify that the current checkpoint matches this level. Since our current checkpoint is in Volcanic Crater instead of Lava Tube, the game will now choose a new checkpoint inside of Lava Tube. The way the game decides which checkpoint to select is by looking at the closest checkpoint in proximity to Jack's position. By standing in this exact location, we are just barely closer to the second checkpoint of the level, so when you die, you'll spawn at this checkpoint, which puts you on the zoomer, making it possible to complete the level. For the first time in history, it was now possible for humans to skip the colossal 72 power cell requirement to unlock the zoomer at the start. This now meant that 50 cells were cut from the run, all the way down to 24. This also cut a whole half hour off the run, and the current world record for this route is sitting at 2336 by Outrageous Josh. Okay, so the next step is Fire Canyon. At this point, it's gonna be difficult for me to convince you that there's something out there more insane than Lava Tube Skip. Fire Canyon Skip is on a whole nother level. The level is extremely long and narrow, there are no cold spots anywhere to be seen, and there's basically nothing to stand on out of bounds. Way back in 2013, there was a slight glimmer of hope that maybe Lava Tube Skip was doable. Fire Canyon Skip didn't even cross our minds. It was only when Lava Tube Skip became a reality in 2016 that the community made efforts to try and find yet another way to lower the power cell count, even though it seemed impossible. For Fire Canyon Skip to become a possibility, a certain type of madman would have to step into the picture. Someone with extensive knowledge of glitches and game mechanics. A person with persistence. Introducing Bobby Kaze. Bobby started glitch hunting for Jack1 back in mid-2015, but has been proficient in finding glitches, texture corruptions, and big time savers in a plethora of games. After watching Lava Tube Skip's discovery from the sideline, he had big interest in trying to take the game to the next level. 
Bobby's first thought in finding Fire Canyon Skip was to incorporate the same methods that were done with Lava Tube Skip. It wouldn't be a long search for Bobby, as he would quickly discover a location where an idle deload could be utilized to perform Fire Canyon Skip. The only problem being, this spot was about midway through the level, and getting that far on foot seemed virtually undoable. Bobby decided to hit up our old pal Kitar for any suggestions for traversing the level without the zoomer. Kitar had actually been working a little bit on Fire Canyon Skip himself, and prior to Bobby asking, had attempted to ledge grab through the entirety of Fire Canyon, but he couldn't make it all the way to the end. He was however able to make it to the midway point. The two came to the realization that Fire Canyon Skip could become a possibility by combining their two discoveries. A checkpoint bypass was still required for the idle deload to work, which Bobby had no issues finding, and on January 5th, 2017, somehow, some way, it all came together. You don't have enough power cells to fuel my heat shield! You can't cross Fire Canyon until you collect enough power cells! If you're starting to see a pattern in this, you're not the only one. An insane skip is theorized and then considered inconceivable. Speedrunners dismantle the game in ways not thought possible, and miraculously, the skip ultimately comes to fruition. What follows is those same runners attempting to make the skip viable for humans, so full game runs could be pushed further than ever before. The ledge grabs out of bounds in Fire Canyon were completely unviable for anyone to possibly attempt. Bobby's video of Fire Canyon Skip includes 8 minutes of straight out of bounds ledge grabbing, half of which are being performed blindly due to the level not loading properly. Oh and also, one missed ledge grab is instant death. For anyone to possibly perform Fire Canyon Skip in a run, we had to find another way. Even prior to proper testing for Fire Canyon Skip, Bobby kept an idea in mind. Back in 2015, a weird mechanic was found in Fire Canyon that involved some strange bouncing on the lava surface. This was quickly dismissed, since full control over Jack while bouncing could only be achieved from the end of the level going backwards. If he tried to use the same strategy from the start of Fire Canyon, Jack would take damage and bounce back to the start. If there was some way to skip the bounce back at the start of the level, then the doors could be opened for a humanly viable Fire Canyon skip. Lots of things were tried to begin the infinite bounces. Jumping off the cliffs into the lava, roll jumping past the bounce back trigger, and even zoom walking under the level and entering from below. Even if you could manage to start the infinite bounces, there are tons of obstacles placed throughout the level that will attract Jack like a magnet. If he gets pulled in by any of these objects and lands on them, it's once again instant death. Nothing seemed to work. What comes next required some out-of-the-box thinking. What if the answer was not in Fire Canyon? This whole time, Bobby and Katar had their sights fixed on Fire Canyon alone. And on August 25th, 2017, a stroll through the beach was all it took.
Bobby uploaded well over 30 separate videos entailing various methods of getting past metal orb crates, precursor ramps, and dark eco crates. While easier than the ledge crabs, this was still just too hard to perform in a real-time setting. But who knows, maybe with enough practice and enough setups for all the various obstacles, someone could in theory make it all work. Bobby consistently documented all the various ways he had tried to make Fire Canyon Skip work, and he would always see the same person pop up in the comments. A black profile picture and the name Luigi. He was definitely fascinated with Bobby's progress and used the YouTube comments to ask questions about Fire Canyon Skip and to congratulate Bobby on his discoveries. He just seemed like a casual viewer at first, but little did we know, he would play a vital role in the full realization of Fire Canyon Skip. In July of 2018, Qatar found an easier and faster method of starting the infinite bounces that didn't revolve going all the way around to Sentinel Beach. By entering Fire Canyon, then saving and loading the game, Jack spawns without the bounce back state. You can keep avoiding the state by jumping within a 3 frame window every time Jack is about to hit the ground. These jumps can be chained to get to the lava at the start of Fire Canyon to begin the infinite bounces. Luigi quickly took notice of this and began improving setups to get past some of the harder obstacles throughout the level. There was a lot he had to work out, but he started nailing them one by one. With grueling amounts of hours spent practicing, Luigi was noticeably becoming better at bouncing through Fire Canyon. And now, it was just a matter of time before everything came together. On December 20th, 2018, Luigi would send a message to the person who inspired his grind all along. Fire Canyon Skip was, for the first time ever, pulled off, on console, by a human. With Luigi being the only person at the time capable of doing Fire Canyon Skip, he knew he had to take it all the way. He wanted to be the first person to set a new world record with Lava Tube Skip and Fire Canyon Skip in the same run, finishing out the game with a total of eight power cells. At the start of 2019, the bi-yearly speedrun marathon Games Done Quick was around the corner. A bunch of Jack runners would attend the event, while Luigi was silently grinding away back in France. On the 7th of January, he got a run past Fire Canyon, and all of a sudden, all eyes turned to twitch.tv slash Luigi. That's insane. That's just insane. How? How can I get it that often? <sighs> okay. Far enough. Okay, that worked. Okay, 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 all right. Can you tell that I'm playing, like, extra uh, stressfully? I don't even know if this, that's a real word. I'm so stressed. Okay, this is not a joke anymore. That wouldn't have... Okay, that wouldn't have, have made it. Nope, not that one either. That's fucking it! Okay, I don't know. This is PvP pace for sure. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I Oh my god, I can't wait to just hug my roommate right now. If that, if that, if this one ends, I'm gonna straight to my roommate and just hug him. Actually, I want to hug ev every single person in my chat. I want to hug you all, really.
How is this even real? How is this even real? I'm sorry, but how? How is this even happening right now? This has to be a, a, a joke. This has to be a, a fucking... A fucking joke, dude. How is this even real? How? No, 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 no. no. Come on, no, dude. No, no, because oh, cause this one's gonna... No! Oh my! Just punch! Just just punch! Just don't roll! Whatever you do, just don't fucking roll! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. What the fuck? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, no no way! What? That's Let's nutty, go. dude. <laughs> what? Oh, oh. Is this boy recording your phone? The nice. Holy <laughs> shit! Go back to Spyro. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Damn, yeah, that was legit, dude. I'm kidding, but I love you. That's our boy, dude. Yes. Holy, Holy shit. shit. I'm so happy you did that. Hell yeah. I'm so happy. With Luigi's incredible feat, Jack's speedrunning had been elevated to new heights that nobody back in 2013 could have imagined. Over the years, all the teamwork and dedication had culminated in a run that was worlds away from where it all started. So where do we go from here? If you only care about the aspect of speed, this might be the end of the road in terms of the power cell count. The current 80% world record by Outrageous Josh with Lava Tube Skip and Fire Canyon Skip sits at 1635, and it's unlikely we'll see 15 with this route. If you care about lowering the power cell count, going down to 7 cells is actually possible, and pretty easy in fact, but it isn't done in speedruns because it's slower. The 4 power cells in the tutorial level Geyser Rock are necessary to collect to leave the level. There's one cell at the end of Fire Canyon that you need to collect to remove a big invisible wall stopping you from going to the second hub. There's one at the end of Mountain Pass, which is the one you can skip. Normally, the platform used to demount you from your zoomer is blocked by a power cell. If you get to the end of the level, you can get off the zoomer by saving and loading, or dying. Afterwards, you can squeeze under the invisible barrier leading into Hub 3. The next cell is at the end of Lava Tube, which follows the same story as the Fire Canyon one. Big invisible barrier, you have to get it. Then the last one is at the top of Golan Mai Citadel, which opens the door and spawns the elevator up to the final boss. So now we're left with the question, is 7 power cells the end? Well, to be honest, going much lower than 7 hasn't exactly been explored all that deeply, mostly due to the fact that skipping additional cells would almost certainly be slower, which generally doesn't favor the goal speedrunners are trying to accomplish. The end of level cells for Fire Canyon and Lava Tube could maybe one day be skipped, which would lower the count to 5. Currently skipping the cells seem a bit out of reach, but once again, it's slightly underexplored. Skipping the Citadel cell seems more or less impossible, considering how tall the elevator ride is up to the final boss. Geyser Rock Skip is another dream scenario where a skip would be incredibly huge, but is most likely impossible with what we know now. The level itself and the cutscene upon exiting are only slightly over 2 minutes, so if a skip were to be viable, you'd have to do it in under that time frame. Sandover Village is actually loaded all the way off in the distance, and with emulator cheats, you can reach it. The level does have collision and making your way up to Fire Canyon does work as intended. To get there in under 2 minutes however, you'd have to somehow get flung all the way across the sea, which seems unlikely. Speaking of getting flung, let's talk about Bridge Blast, the theoretical endgame for Jack and Daxter. This is about to get wild, so strap yourselves in. Shown here in a tutorial by Ruh, you have to follow a very specific setup to activate a little something you'll see later. Start by going out of bounds with a boosted uppercut. Continue along the out of bounds standpoint and load in Sandover Village. Go back to Forbidden Jungle and begin the Connect the Eco Beams mission. 
While doing the final mirror, you need to hit pause at the same time as the cutscene ends. This causes a weird side effect where the Fisherman cutscene dialogue will begin to play. Now you need to hop down to the Fisherman and speak to him during a certain audio cue. At this point, the game completely shits itself and the frame rate drops down to single digits for multiple minutes. In this horrible lag, you need to catch an eel to fail the mission as quickly as possible. Now you might notice things take a bit of a turn. The bridge above the fisherman has now entered a wild, uncontrollable frenzy. What you're actually seeing are the physics of the bridge being broken down because of the lag. The planks on the bridge also happen to be moving at ludicrous speeds, capable of launching you way out into the void. Holy moly. What the- please clip this right now, somebody. That is Misty Island. That is Geyser. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Alright, so with Bridge Blast, it can either send you going that way, or it can send you going that way. And the theory is, I'm on emulator right now, so if we turn on load boundaries, you can now see the planes that are both checkpoints, or not both, but they're either checkpoints, they're either load boundaries, or like triggers for cutscenes and stuff like that. So the theory is to get this bridge to throw you towards this way, and as it throws you that way, it passes you through one of these checkpoint triggers out here. Because some of them are differently colored, and some of them, I believe, are still active. So you can pass through one of these. There's no way the developers thought like you could get out here, because all of this is just void. You can't walk on anything, you'll die, and then you'll respawn back over there. But if Bridge Blast could potentially throw Jack way out there. I believe that is Citadel cuts, or not cutscenes, but Citadel uh, checkpoint triggers out there. So it could, in theory, throw you out way over here and potentially hit a currently active checkpoint. And if you pass through that checkpoint and then die, the game will see, oh, your last checkpoint was in Citadel. We should respawn you in Citadel then. And it would skip all of this, and you would just come straight to the end out here. If you could somehow bridge blast all the way from Forbidden Jungle to the final boss, you could technically beat the game with four power cells. Those four power cells all being in Geyser Rock. The tutorial level of the game. If you care about speed, we're not even sure bridge blast would be faster due to the lengthy setup and all the lag that follows. This is definitely a bit of a stretch, but could it happen? I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Jack and Daxter has had a rich history of many players contributing to its legacy. From the humble beginnings of a simple save and load, to huge sequence breaks resembling a mad scientist experiment. I'd like to think we've made it quite far, maybe even to the end. But if there's one thing I know about speedrunning, it's that you never know for sure. Thanks for watching. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. Take care and have a good one.